Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to, I guess, another installment of Film Speak Live. Efren uh, Luviano, opinions on the Harry Potter reboot series. <laughs> it's one of the worst ideas in, in, in a very, very long time. I am, like, so mad about the fact that they're doing that. And it's not even like I'm the biggest Harry Potter stan. Like, I, I love Harry Potter. Those films were incredibly, you know, informative in my time growing up, you know, whether it was just like creating memories with friends, again, adding to my love of cinema already. You know, the, the special thing about when those movies were coming out is that around the time that first movie came out, Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone in the US, whatever. About when that time that that first film came out, the first four books had been published. So they were still writing the books as the films were coming out. So there was this really cool, like kind of cross medium crossover just kind of going on in the zeitgeist. Like there was, you know, every other year you'd have like a book release. There'd be like, a, you'd go to your local, um, you know, bookstore, whether it was in like a small town or a Barnes and Noble or something like that, an indie bookstore or whatever, they do it all up for, for Harry Potter. They would have like themed drinks. There'd be like potion making for like the kids and a bunch of other stuff. And I, I just remember the atmosphere was just like Potter was the thing in the aughts. Like that was the franchise. That was, that was my generation's Star Wars. And it was nothing like Star Wars, but it captured that same magic of like what a Star Wars did back at the time. It, it just took took hold of the zeitgeist in such a profound way and just created lifelong fans. And so it was kind of cool when the movies were coming out, you know, you'd get the fifth book that would come out right after the fourth movie came out. And so then people were already like comparing that to the book. And then we were going into anticipating, oh, the, okay, so this fifth book, that's how this is going down. And then the movie was coming out. And we were like, okay, how are they going to adapt that? And so there, again, there was just like this really once in a lifetime kind of crossover thing that they were doing. It basically did what they, they weren't <laughs> able to do with Game of Thrones, which was the books were being written as they were making the films. Obviously, J.K. Rowling had a vision in mind for how she wanted the story to go, how she wanted it to wrap up, so much so that she told Alan Rickman when he was cast in the film. Like, there, there was just something special about that. You can't recapture the magic of what it was like to see that come to life, to see those books come to life so vividly and perfectly. When we were reading the books, we all in our head had our own vision for like what the world looked like but the second that those movies came out i mean that was kind of like a universally accepted like yes it was almost like if you were to see a dream like projected onto somewhere like, like maybe the details weren't like a hundred percent but by and large when people saw this world on the big screen for the first time they were like it's everything i could have imagined and hoped for and more and so like you had that on top of that you had the pitch perfect casting of uh, Daniel Radcliffe, you had Emma Watson, Watson, you had Rupert Grint, you had Bonnie Wright as Ginny, uh, like all of these these incredible actors that kind of like came in at, that were the kids. People didn't know who these kids were. The, the, this is the franchise that made them popular, that made them into super mega stars. And then you had them like coming of age and growing with the movies and the productions and like they were just instantly iconic, instantly attached to these characters and played them so fucking well. And then you had it anchored by some of the best British actors to ever grace the silver screen. Unfortunately, Richard Harris passed and they had to replace him with Michael Gambon. But like, you you had Richard Harris as Dumbledore. That's like a miraculous casting. That does not ever happen again. You, you have Alan Rickman, one of the greatest actors to have ever lived. His role as Snape is synonymous with him. And, and the fact that he was the only one who knew what his character's outcome was from the very beginning, that will never happen again. You have um, the actress who played uh, uh, McGonagall, uh, Maggie, uh, fuck, I forget her last name, but she she's incredible. Love her. One of the greatest British actresses of all time. You have Gary Oldman, Brendan Gleeson, like all of these titans of acting. Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid, God bless his soul. It was a kind of cast that you won't ever see again. And so that added to the prestige, right? That that helped make the, the movies more believable, that helped give it a gravitas. On top of that, you had Chris Columbus, who was one of the best 
family filmmakers in the business doing the first two movies and laying the groundwork, the foundation. It's it's like it's insane what they did with those first two movies. The second one, especially like, a, you know, a two hour and 40 minute family <laughs> noir. Like what? Who does that? And then you have Alfonso Cuaron step in and completely change the game. And then, you know, Mike Newell, I, who, who did the fourth one. Then you have uh, David Yates. I, I'm not the biggest fan of his, but I think he closed out those final chapters very well. And you're left with something that it left a profound impact on pop culture to the point where they went and made theme parks about it. You go to Wizarding World in Orlando, it is based off of those movies. Those movies have defined what Harry Potter is. And so the question is, if you're going to remake those movies that only ended in 2011, I believe, so it's not like it's that far behind us. What what's what are you doing? What what are you bringing to the table? What are you adding to this insane cultural footprint that it hasn't existed yet? Like okay, yeah, you can expand on little parts of the books that weren't adapted for the films. Well, maybe we should think about the process of adaptation and we should think about okay, if I'm going to adapt Prisoner of Azkaban, what is going to give me the same feeling of that book? How do I capture the spirit of that book while making it as palatable as possible? How am I going to trim the fat and make it a damn good adaptation? All of the films, regardless of how you feel about like some of the cool things that you would have liked to have seen thrown in there, they're damn good adaptations because they got to the heart of what those books were trying to do and they cut out the fat. I don't want to see 10 episodes that are going through the motions of day in and day out in Hogwarts or whatever with these kids going on the same adventure that we already know the outcome and it's longer and it's more excruciating as well. It just, I don't see the appeal in that. And on top of that, because the films are, are so profound, because they're so iconic, because they are just like, <laughs> you know, like again, they, they're like my generation Star Wars, anything that you do is just gonna feel like a cheap imitation of that. The actors that you cast in those roles are now going to have to live up to Alan Rickman, Robbie Coltrane, Emma Watson, and Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grint. Who in their right mind, if you're a parent, is going to want to have your kid take part in this series. I mean, on top of the backlash, which I, I obviously that's, that's horrible for, for anyone who's cast in that role, it's doing such a disservice to something that came before. And and I think while, while I understand that remakes happen, reboots happen, this franchise and this series is not far behind us. Again, we have theme parks that are based off of these movies. Are you going to have to now retrofit your theme park to fit the series that you're doing? And if the series is going to feel like the movies, what is the point of the adaptation in the first place other than just a, a cheap cash grab? Because that's all that it seems like to me. It seems like they had no idea what they wanted to do with the Wizarding World IP. Instead of doing something creative, instead of making a Marauders prequel, instead of actually trying to write the ship of the Fantastic Beast franchise, whatever, whether or not that was doable, or just like a sequel, or, or you know, I'm not even saying they have to do like a Cursed Child adaptation because that's a terrible uh, stage play. I think, I, I, I don't even like that story, but I mean, like, at least that is more interesting than remaking something that is already a perfect adaptation of a book series. Like those films did the impossible. They made eight films that adapted seven books and stuck the fucking landing and each one of them was beloved. That doesn't happen like ever. And, and especially when the announcement includes like, you know, the Harry Potter logo, the, the Hogwarts castle from that we know from the movies, the John Williams theme. It's just like, <laughs> you're like, oh, we're going to make a new Harry Potter series and you're giving us the imagery and like, you know, iconography associated with those films. And truthfully, at the same time, it's like, I, I get it because like, I don't want to see a Harry Potter reimagining that is devoid of John Williams theme, but, but it's also just like, I'd rather go watch those movies. So I just, to me, it is the most pointless thing that a studio could do with how perfect those adaptations were critically and commercially beloved. The fact that they're not that far behind us, 
the fact that we have theme parks that still draw upon those things that we we still associate you know harry potter with those movies to me this reboot series is the most creatively bankrupt idea in a long list of creatively bankrupt ideas that i've seen from a studio in a very very long time and i just i genuinely hope that it falls through the cracks and that it just doesn't happen. And on top of that, we, look, we didn't even touch on the J.K. Rowling of it all. I mean, that's that's like playing with poison, right? Like, she's such a, regardless of what you think about her or whatever, she's a very controversial figure. And to want to adapt, like reimagine something that she's still attached to is is kind of questionable. Um, and you're alienating a group of people that have otherwise largely celebrated this franchise and, and I just I don't know why you would want to do that and then on top of that the thing people would want to see if they want to see another Harry Potter thing they'd want to see something with the legacy characters and in making a Harry Potter reboot series we are now getting something that does not have those legacy characters so now you're taking the inherent like draw out of you know another Harry Potter thing like we'd want to see Harry as an Auror we'd want to see where Ron and Hermione are in, the, in their life and everything like that it, it's just like and it's such a layup too right legacy sequels are so popular right now we just got like a bunch of them last year top gun maverick you know made a billion dollars or whatever was nominated for a million things i'm not saying that a harry potter legacy sequel is going to be the next top gun maverick but like at the same time if this is like one of those instances and i hate this because i, I hate that mentality why would you not follow the trend that is clearly working for people right now. Like put a lot of care in there, put a lot of effort into the writing and, and all that. I mean, maybe the cast didn't want to come back. That's a factor too. But I think at that point you let it rest or you go and explore different parts of this world because it is a rich, vast world that we have only seen very brief moments of. And there's so much more that they could explore and they're choosing to go back to the well and just make another Harry Potter series. I, I just, again, it is one of the worst ideas, the most creatively bankrupt and cynical ideas that I have ever heard, it, like ever covering movies online. It's just, it's fucking bleak, man. It's bleak and it's depressing. And as you can tell, I am very passionate about it. I'm very fired up about it. God damn, dude, it is one of the most depressing things ever that we're at a point where we're going to remake Harry Potter as a television series barely over 10 years from the finale. It just fucking hell, man. Fucking hell.